a beautiful people that live inside of the YouTubes. My name is John and in this video we're going to talk about web experimentation. So in this video I'm going to walk you through how to set up a simple A-B test using Optimizely Web. Now I've been using optimization tools and experimentation tools for about seven or eight years and by far Optimizely is the favorite tool that I've ever come across. Now, slight disclaimer, I actually started working at Optimizely about five days ago. However, pinky promise, I have actually been using it as a product for eight years. I wouldn't recommend anything on this channel that I didn't like myself, so I think this is a great tool. Now, Optimizely Web is a enterprise level tool, so it's aimed at companies. So you're not gonna be putting this type of framework or tool in your portfolio or your hobby websites. This is aimed at companies to help them increase conversion rates. Now, my biggest success story was at a big female online retailer. We actually did one experiment on the PLP page, the listing page, and that experiment increased conversion rates by about 11%, and that actually made the company an extra $1 million per year. So web experimentation can be a game changer for certain companies. I recommend you check it out. Now, if you haven't come across my videos before, this is that point that every single YouTube video says is you know, smash the subscribe button. It's very easy to lose content in YouTube. So if you wanna see about you know, web development, productivity, CMS, maybe some experimentation, who knows? Hit subscribe so you don't lose my channel. It'll be worth it, I promise. So we're gonna start off by looking at how we can install Optimizely Web. Then we're gonna look at the interface a little bit and set up a basic experiment. So sound good, let's crack on with this content. The good thing about Optimizely is that it is a SaaS based product. This means that you don't need to install anything yourself. All you simply need to do is go over to the portal URL and log in. So the portal URL is app.optimizely.com. Now, in order to get a login, you're going to have to speak to someone at Optimizely. So go over to the main optimizely.com website, make an inquiry, someone will get in contact with you, and that will get the ball rolling. Now, assuming you have a login, you know, pretty much add in your email and your password, pretty much like you would in any other system. Now, Optimizely comes in two different flavors. First, it comes with the web flavor. So this is for doing client-side experimentations. So this is the thing that I'm gonna be demonstrating to you today. So for web, all you need to do is inject a snippet into your website, and then you can come into this platform and then start performing some experimentations. There is also a full stack flavor, which I might do in another video. So full stack is for doing experimentations at the server side level. So if you wanted to do an experimentation within your mobile app, or if you wanted to do it within C Sharp or React or JavaScript or Go. Now, Optimizely is pretty good. Um, Optimizely full stack comes with maybe 20 different SDKs, so you can easily get up and running in pretty much most languages nowadays. Now, the portal for web and full stack is pretty much the same. As you can see, I've logged in. The interface is fairly clean and modern. We've got this projects tab. So if I go into projects and I click on new project down the bottom, it doesn't disappear as you can see i can create a web project or a full stack project so depending on your license will depend on what options you have so today we're going to be creating a web project i've already got some set up so i won't go through that now all you need to do is go to this big settings cog here now clicking on settings is going to give you access to your snippet implementation so all we need to do is copy our snippet as you can see here and then add this within our application now you could add this through your Google Tag Manager or you could actually add it directly into your application, which is what I'm going to do. So let's head over to my Optimizely demo site, which you can download from my GitHub, link below, and see how we're gonna add it in. For this demonstration, I'm going to use this super simple sample site that I created. Now, this is available to clone from my GitHub if you really want to. It's John D. Jones dash POC, proof of concept, slash optimizely dash web. So feel free to come over here. However, as you're about to see, it is very simple. Now, if I open up my Visual Studio codes, as you can see, I've got a web page and I've just simply pasted in my snippet that I copied from optimizely in here. So literally it's that, click save, and then that's all we need to do. Now I've already pushed this sample site to the internet. So as you can see, we've got this very simple website, which has got an H2. If you can see here, it's got a little button that we can do some stuff with later. And if I do a view page source, 
you can see that the snippet is injected here. So this is available and it's over at optimizely-web.netlify.app. So this is all you need to do to set everything up for Optimizely Web. Super simple, took me what, 30 seconds. Now we can start doing some web experimentation. So we're onto the good bit already. We are now back inside the Optimizely portal and it's time to set up some experiments. Now, one of the great things about Optimizely is it will allow you to create as many experiments as you want. So you can have a really high test velocity. So you can either have one test, you can have multiple tests running on the same page, or you can have hundreds of tests running throughout your website. Now, when you're doing some experiments, you don't want to have to set up the same tasks over and over again. That would be very laborious. So instead, we want to be as efficient as possible. And this is why Optimizely gives you the option of creating page templates and creating on-click events that you can reuse throughout all your experiments. So I recommend that you set up these templates before you actually get going with your experiments. So to create these templates, dead simple, all we do is go over to this implementation tab, click on it, and then from here we can create ourselves a new page template. So if we click on new page, we'll get this new dialog. So in here we can have any name we want, so let's just call it home. So the editor URL is going to be the URL which appears within the portal. So let's call this Optimizely Web Netlify.app, so our home page. Now the reason why we have an editor URL and we also have triggers. So if you're having a classic server-side website, you might just want to have your trigger being on the home page and it matches on the full URL. Now, as you can see, or you probably can't see because my head's too big, you also have some different criteria on how the URL will match. So you can have a simple match, which will just match on the URL, an exact match, which will also match on query strings. You have a substring match. So if you say wanted to do a category based search, so let's say you had a website and you had categories and then a name, doing a substring match will allow you to map on multiple pages, not just one. And then also you've got your classic regular expression match. So if you want to come up with one of your own rules and do something completely custom and crazy, you can do whatever you want. So based on that, you can see that we've got our normal homepage match. The other thing that I should say is that if you actually want to do stuff like React SPAs, obviously the URL match might not work because if you're using React Router, then things are a little bit different. So you can actually do things like when the URL changes, when the DOM changes, when a callback is called, or some custom options. Oh, that's annoying. So all we want to do for this experiment is just keep it dead simple because we've just got an HTML page as we're going to do a simple match on our web page, on our home page. It's called home, drop done. So as you can see, we've got our home page template created. Now we can also create an event if we really want to. So if we go to events, we can create say like a new click button. So if we have a new click event, so let's just call this button click. Um, we want to choose the home page that we just created. So let's create our event. Now, if we try and minimize this so you can see it. So as you can see, we've got our home page here. We've got this nice little selector. So all I can do is use the selector and then using the selector, I can pick the body, the H2. Can you see that the H2 is updating here? Nice. Or we can do it on this button. So we've got this clipboard button here. Let's just call it clipboard button. So now we've actually got a way of creating a simple click handler. So as you can see, if you're creating multiple experiments on the same page, being able to create these templates and these button click events, it's basically just going to save you a little bit of time. Now we're on to the good part. We can create ourselves an experiment. So as you can see, we've got this big experiment button. So clicking on experiments is going to allow you to create a new experiment. We just click on create new and for this, we're going to create an AB test. Now, obviously, it is possible to create things like a multi-variant test, personalization campaign, a multi-armed bandit test. For this video, let's keep it simple and do an A-B test. So let's just do our A-B test. And then, as you can see, we have this targeting drop-down. Now, this is where our reuse is really useful. So instead of having by URL and having to copy and paste that URL everywhere, we can do saved pages and we can pick that home that we created a minute ago. So as you can see, we've got that home template. 
Now this is really useful. Say that your URL changed and you had all the experiments and you mapped the URL directly, you would have to go through all of Optimizely Web and update these URLs. Instead, by using this template, you can simply update the URL on the page template itself, job done, and then all your experiments are gonna be updated. So as you can see, we can simply create our experiment. And this doesn't work that well with my uh, screen grab tool. So let's just do um, home test. Targeting by pay, save pages, home, create experiment. Now, once the experiment gets created, we'll have access to the visual editor. So you can see we have these two variations and this is gonna be the thing where we're gonna be running our test. So we can have our total traffic as a 50-50 split. If we go down to this traffic allocation, we can update this. So if you really want to do something like a canary release or a dark launch, you might want to do a 90-10 split, it's all depending on your strategies. Now going back to variations, you can see that the original one is just going to give us a bog standard page. So this was our sample site. Now, the interesting bit comes when we go to our first variation. So clicking on our variation gives us access to start creating our experiment. So from here, we can start building an experiment. Now, if you're a solid dev at heart like me, the thing that you might wanna do is go over to this visual code errors editor. So from here, you can see you can add in JavaScript or CSS directly. So I've gotten, let's, we could just do CSS and then maybe we can just do a H2 background color red. And as you can see, we can start creating our variation or our different experiments. So if you really want to, you can build up your DOM objects and your CSS using this. However, if you're just more of a point and click guy, you can see that we can actually have this visual editor. So let's say that we've got our body, we can just click on it and then we can say variation two or variant. Yeah, let's save that because we want to. Now there's all different ways of creating. We can insert images, we can do redirects. Let's add redirect in as well. Let's go to google.com. And then we just simply click save. For making this demonstration easy as possible to follow, actually doing a redirect probably isn't the easiest thing. So we're gonna quickly delete it. So as you can see, all we need to do is scroll down the bottom and just do this delete redirect. Very simple, boom. So instead, let's do our on-click event. My big head's again in the way, so maybe let's just move this over a tad. There we go, it's a bit better. So using the create, we can do this element change. Using the selector, let's actually select the clipboard button. So let's change our HTML to click me, click me. And then click save. Now, before we can actually do anything with our experiment, we need to add a metric. So as you can see from this little warning sign here, we're not gonna be able to publish our experiment until we add ourselves a metric. So let's click on our metrics. So from here, you can see that we've got access to our page templates that we created and also that the event templates we created. So you can do a metric based on your overall revenue. However, for this, let's just do it on that clipboard button click. So adding on this, then increase in unique conversions, click save to experiment. And then that's it. So if we scroll down the bottom, click save. That is all we need. So after clicking save, as you can see, this is now live and we can click publish experiment. So we can do a publish and start. And this is then going to push the experiment live. Now, as you can see, we've got running. Now, one thing that I should notice, and it's a really good thing to point out, is that when the experiment is uploading, you'll get this uploading to CDN button. And this is gonna give you inconsistent results. So you need to make sure that this little bracketed uploading to CDN disappears before you actually start doing your testing. It only takes about 30 seconds, 60 seconds, super quick. Now, before I talk, uh, while we're waiting for this to upload, I'm gonna talk about this extension. So 
clear cookie and reload. So this is a Chrome extension. I'm obviously using Chrome. This is a very handy tool to use when you're trying to test your experiments. So obviously when Optimizely is running an experiment, as soon as a visitor visits your web page, he or she is going to be stamped with a cookie. And this means that they're always going to see that same experiment until it finishes. However, as developers, if you're trying to test your experiment, you want a way to be able to clear your cookies really simply. And this is the reason, and this is where clear cookie and reload comes into play. As you can see at the top of my screen, I've got this little reload button. So going back here, you can see that we've now got rid of our uploading CDN. So our test is live. Now, if I go to my page and click refresh, what should happen is I've got this very yinked to click me. Now, if I click reload again and reload again, I will get the same variation because my cookie has been set. So if I simply click on this cookie reload button, what will happen is eventually, if the demo gods like me, I'll actually start seeing the different variation. And this is how you can test that your experiments are working and your page is looking how you expect it to. So if I click this button again, hopefully I'll go back to the other variation sooner rather than later. So in order for this test and experiment to work, if I click on this click me, what's going to happen is this button click is going to start adding to my metrics. It will take a little while. However, you can see we've got this live view here. Clicking on live view is then going to give the results of the experiment. And over a period of time, you're going to be able to tell which experiment converts the most. So as you can see here, we've got visitors three, two, we've got our button click. So this one's got a 66.7% chance of increasing the conversion because I was clicking on that button. So using this tool, you can test different layouts, different experiments to see how you can improve your conversion rate in your website. As I think you can agree, the interface is really simple. Setting up experiments is super simple. So I recommend if you're looking for this type of tool, give Optimizely a try. And that concludes the end of my Optimizely web walkthrough. I'm hoping, as you can see, that it's super simple to create an experiment. I really like the interface and I've used it multiple times over the years on multiple projects to great success. Now, as I was saying at the start of the video, Optimizely also has a full stack option. So if you want to see some more videos on experiments, there's a load of stuff in Optimizely web I didn't talk about, which I can go back and show you. So if you want to see some videos of this type, please leave comments below, like this video, and I'll be more than happy to do some experimentation videos. Now it's got to that stage of the video where I need to plug myself. If you haven't already, smash the subscribe button to become an absolute legend. I also do a Sunday newsletter, the link is below. So if you want to keep an update with my content and actually get some weekly news and links of industry news and things that I found interesting, subscribe because you know, it's not going to hurt you, not going to spam you. Also, if you want to do me the absolute solidist of the solidists, hit that like button and help me trick the YouTube algorithm God into sharing my video to more people because I would massively appreciate it. Anyway, I hope you have found some value in this video. Hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are and happy coding people.